Hi, my name is Keith Nitka, and I'm proud to be the Battleship Operations Manager on board Battleship Wisconsin here at uh, Nauticus. And I want to thank you for joining me today on this Whiskey Wednesday virtual adventure. So uh, right now we're inside mount 5-4, which is the second 5-inch mount on the port side of the ship. And we're going to start off our second installment of Sailor Art on board Battleship Wisconsin. So you can see her here over my shoulder. There's a, there's a painting of Bart Simpson. Uh, and he's saying uh, the, the ever so expressive lock and load, dude. Uh, Bart Simpson, of course. The Simpsons was a huge thing that we watched on CCTV here uh, on board the ship when we were out in the Persian Gulf. Uh, I, I think I've seen just about every episode that aired in uh, 1990 and 1991. Uh, and, you know, because it, it came through uh, AFARTS and we watched it on a regular basis up there. But so uh, Sailor Art is in a lot of spaces on board the ship, some of the spaces that aren't seen by a lot of officers on board the ship. So this is one of those areas inside of uh, the gun mount of 5-4. So there's Bart Simpson, and then also in here, there's a pair of guns, of course, five inch. It's a dual five inch gun mount, and each gun is named. Just like inside the turrets, uh, most of the five inch guns are named as well. And here inside Mount 5-4, we have Oingo and Boingo. Oingo, Oingo Boingo, of course, was a, uh, I guess you'd call it an alternative rock band in the, uh, in the late 80s, the early 90s. Uh, not a lot of number one stuff. Some of the stuff I do know, but, uh, but I don't believe there were any number one hits for Oingo Boingo. But in this case, that's what the, uh, the guns in 5-4 are named, Oingo and Boingo. So if you follow me, we're going to see some more. So we're here inside the second deck machine shop. Uh, the machine shop, of course, very important in the 1940s and 1950s. If a piece of equipment on the ship breaks down, uh, they can bring it here, get repaired, whatever the, whatever the piece of machinery may be uh electric motors fans whatever they can bring it into the different machine shops and fix it the 1980s very very important because there's uh equipment on board the ship motors and and fans and whatnot that the company that built it in the 40s the 30s no longer exists so you're not getting spare parts for it so it needs to be remade uh remanufactured here in the machine shop so in the 1980s uh, all four Iowa-class battleships, the machine shop was a very, very important piece of, uh, or very, very important space in, in the ship. Now, even though it's not a painting per se, this is sailor art nonetheless. It was made by the sailors that are here inside the machine shop. So you, it's hard to read with the glare, but it says USS Wisconsin BB-64 machine shop. And then it lists all the sailors that worked here in the machine shop. MR2 Maxwell, MR1 Trupo, MR2 Waldo. And then at the end there, it's designated with a P or a DS. Down here at the bottom, Desert Shield, Desert Storm is a DS. And uh, 22 October 1988, plank owner is a P. So MR2 Maxwell was a plank owner here in the, in the machine shop. Uh, MR2 Ferguson is a plank owner and also a veteran of Desert Shield, Desert Storm. So all the, uh, all the men in, who worked in the machine shop here uh, machinery repairmen that worked in the shop here, their name is on this plaque. So again, not a painting, but still a piece of sailor art nonetheless. But let's continue on. So another section of the machine shop is here in electrical rewind or motor rewind shop. This area, again, one of those spaces, very, very busy where they were rewinding electric motors uh, to be taken care of. And when I say they were rewinding electric motors, it wasn't necessarily just on Battleship Wisconsin. When we were in Desert Shield, Desert Storm, if there was another ship out there, another U.S. ship out there that had a motor that needed rewind or a piece of machinery that needed reworking, they could take care of that here on board the ship. It'd be a lot faster to send that part here to the machine shop, have it repaired and sent back to that ship, rather than send it home to the States, try and get a replacement part and then send it back out to the Persian Gulf. Uh, so... This is the electric rewind shop. This, of course, is the rating symbol for the electrician's mate that worked uh, in this area. Again, like in, the, like in the first video there where you see the rating symbols for the jobs in the spaces is a very common practice for sailor art in the different work areas. So this, of course, is the electrician's mate here inside Motor Rewind. But let's continue on. 
art. So sailor art doesn't necessarily need to be a painting on a bulkhead or on an overhead somewhere. Uh, another one of those sailor art instances is here. It's on the deck inside of uh, our division, one of our division spaces. Now our division is repair. Uh, our division consists of the HTs or the hull technicians and also uh, D seamen, damage control, uh, damage control. They're firefighters in essence in the Navy. Uh, this is the rating symbol for the D seamen. So it's a crossed axe and uh, hammer and then so you find this as just as you walk into the space here on the second deck uh, port side uh, just before the galley so this again sailor art you can see there's two types of or two colors of tile that are in the deck to make this rating symbol and we're going to see a little bit more of this uh, as we continue on with the video so we're here on the second deck, port side again, just down the passageway from a uh, machine shop. And this is the office for the master at arms. Uh, again, the rating symbol for the, uh, for the job on the door. And there's quite a bit of sailor art actually on the door. Uh, as you saw in the first video there, they use the ship's crest for a lot of different things. And they'll just change some of the words inside the crest to represent different things. But here on this door, this is the master at arms force or the, uh, the police force on board the ship. Now in 1991, when the ship was last in service, there was a master at arms rate, the MA, uh, but there were not many uh, in the rate. So they were still at that time taking from other rates. You could apply to be a master at arms. You could be a boiler technician. You could be a quartermaster. You could be a signalman, uh, but you could apply to be in the master at arms force. Uh, so this office had in it master at arms, but it also had other rates that were training as, and they were uh, officially Master at Arms on board the ship. But Master at Arms, that is the police force on board the ship. But let's continue on. So here we are at Mount 5-5, five five, uh, the five inch mount on the starboard side all the way aft. It's the, the very last mount, uh, so to speak, on board the ship. Number wise, it's Mount 5-5. Five five. Uh, it is also, as you can see, the Marine Corps mount. So there, uh, painted in, in the black and gray, is uh, the Eagle Globe and Anchor, or the Marines EGA. And uh, that, was, that was placed on board the ship in 1990, or I should say it was painted on board the ship in 1990 by the, uh, the sergeant that was in charge of the gun mount, Sergeant Ricky Scott. He did the artwork in 1990. Now, when the ship was mothballed, everything was painted haze gray. So that was painted over at, a, at, uh, at that time. And uh, museum staff had repainted something very similar to it, but it wasn't quite right. In 2020, in 2020, I got a hold of Sergeant Scott and I asked him to come and redo his artwork from the 1990s. So in the summer of uh, 2021, Sergeant Scott came on board and redid his Eagle Globe and Anchor. Uh, it is an exact replica of what he had initially painted in 1990. Um, and on either side of the five inch mount was the enlisted Eagle Globe and Anchor. And also on the opposite side of that was the officer's Eagle Globe and Anchor. So for those of you that are not aware, there are differences in the Eagle Globe and Anchor, depending on whether you're an officer or an enlisted uh, Marine. But the, uh, he didn't get an opportunity to uh, paint those because the uh, a few months after redoing this artwork, uh, he uh, well he passed away. Uh, Sergeant Scott was in an accident and uh, lost his life in that accident. And uh, so I'm I'm very appreciative of the fact that he came and uh, spent some time with us that that one summer. I think it was about two weeks he was here because he actually did the work and he didn't like it. So he, we repainted. Uh, the haze gray and he started over again. Uh, he was very meticulous with the work that he was doing and if you see pictures of what was originally there in 1990 that is an exact replica. He spent a lot of time making sure that it was exactly the same as it was that he initially did in the 1990s. Now one of the questions we get asked is why do the Marines have a five inch mount and uh, subsequently how did the Eagle Globe and Anchor get on the uh, get on the mount? Well the five inch mount was manned by the Marines to give them something to do other than beating up on us sailors when we were on board the ship. Uh, 
idle hands make uh, make for devil's work. So in them having a five inch mount that they would take care of and, and operate, uh, they had things to do other than beating up on us sailors. And the Eagle Globe and Anchor, uh, Captain Habel, who was the Marine Corps uh, detachment captain, CO at the time, asked Captain Blesh if it would be possible for them to paint an Eagle Globe and Anchor on their gun mount. And Captain Blesh said, only if, you're, only if your Marines can outgun my gunner's mates in the five-inch mounts. So they have an Eagle Globe and Anchor up on the five-inch mount. That's how the Eagle Globe and Anchor got there. And Sergeant Scott is the, uh, is the Marine that painted that, uh, that Eagle Globe and Anchor. But let's go inside the five-inch mount. So we are now inside of the Marine Mount, uh, Mount 5-5, and as you can see over my head, the guns are named Bohica and the Grunt. Now I'm told that the Grunt wasn't always the Grunt. I'm also told by some of the Marines that worked in here in the Mount that it was named uh, Fubar. So uh, Fubar or the Grunt, Bohica, those are the names of the, uh, of the five inch guns here in the Marine Corps mount. The grunt, of course, is rel relatively self-explanatory. FUBAR is a acronym used in the military that I can't say here on, uh, on a Whiskey Wednesday virtual adventure. Uh, so is Bohica. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you're aware of it, it'll bring a chuckle uh, to you. If you're not aware of it, look it up. It's, it's kind of funny stuff. Uh, but these are the... These are the names of the guns here in, in Mount 5-5. So, uh, like I was saying up in, uh, up in that repair division office, uh, there were a few places on board the ship where uh, sailor art was done in tile. This is uh, one of those spaces. So we're, we're on the third deck inside the armored box just at the end of Broadway. So if you could, if you could in essence, where you're standing, turn around, uh, you would be looking down Broadway forward. Uh, but we're all the way back aft in, uh, on the third deck inside the armored box. The port and starboard berthings for the Marine Detachment are off to my left and right hand sides. And this, of course, is the Eagle Globe and Anchor of the Mar Marine. And it says Marine Detachment, USS Wisconsin, BB-64 underneath it. There are six uh, different colored tiles that were used to make this, uh, this particular piece of sailor art. And it was done by the first sergeant at the time, First Sergeant Wilkerson of the Wisconsin Mardet. He's the one who actually did the artwork, uh, cutting out all the different pieces of tile, fitting them together, and then getting them down here on the deck. Uh, so this, again, another piece of sailor art here on board the ship. And that's the backstory to how it got here and who did it and what it's done with. But let's go take a look at some more. So we're just outside of Mardet Berthing here inside of After Plot. This room in particular is the 16-inch gun room for, uh, for After Plot. 16-inch uh, gun room we're standing in on the other side of this bulkhead, on the other side of this portal, is the 5-inch gun room. Uh, but here inside of the 16-inch gun room, we have sailor art. Here on board the uh, Battleship Wisconsin, we have here on this status board, he is commonly referred to as the cow god. Uh, the Y is missing, but obey the cow god. Uh, story has it that when the ship was decommissioned and in Philadelphia, one of the sailors that was, worked in this space here, he, uh, he was unhappy with his situation, I guess, for, for lack of a better term, and uh, was also big into heavy metal music. While in Philadelphia there at the Philly Navy Yard, he went and saw a concert, and the heavy metal concert uh, featured a cow god on stage uh, that they had, to they had to blindly obey. And when he came back, he brought the cow god with him. So this is one of the uh, paintings of the cow god that he did. We have other smaller samples in different areas of the ship. I'm aware of three, this being one of three that I'm aware of. Um, if you have sailors on board the ship, if you know where there are some, uh, please email me or contact us through the comment section below. Uh, tell me where I can find uh, some more of the cow gods, if you know where they are. But uh, that's, a, that's a small portion. It's, a, again, it's sailor art, but it's, 
it's outside of the realm of what's actually considered sailor art. This was done after the ship was uh, commissioned. This was after the decommissioning period, uh, after the decommissioning day uh, when the ship was in the shipyard of, up in Philly. So the, the last piece of sailor art I want to show you on this installment, we are up in the 04 level chart house. Uh, the chart house, of course, where the quartermasters stored all their uh, navigation equipment. Uh, Omega, satellite, GPS, Grand Charlie, sextants, uh, telescopic allodades, charts. It's all up here in the chart house. Uh, the last piece of sailor art, however, is here on the other side of this door. Now, this door leads from the chart house to the starboard side quartermaster's table. Uh, that door there leads to uh, one of the captains at sea cabins. But in this door here, uh, this last piece of artwork for today is, you can see the fist with the, uh, the, the arm, the forearm with the fist, and above it is stenciled First Lieutenant. Uh, this is a commemorative stencil, actually, uh, and it is for the First Lieutenant. This piece here is a cast. When we were off of Viegas Island doing a uh, gunnery exercise with the 16-inch and the 5-inch guns, uh, the First Lieutenant was here inside of the chart house, and he was making his way out to the pilot house and as he was stepping through as he's stepping through this door the concussion of the gun just at that time blew the door shut as his arm was here broke his wrist uh the gun the the door hitting him in between the frame broke his wrist so what you've got stenciled here of course is a cast on his wrist because the first lieutenant uh, broke his wrist during gunnery practice here on board the battleship. Uh, so that's our last piece of artwork for today. Uh, we'll get one more installment. I think there's uh, there's there's plenty there's plenty in uh, to get one more installment, if not two more installments of sailor art on board battleship Wisconsin. But I want to thank you for joining me today on this Whiskey Wednesday virtual adventure, and I look forward to seeing y'all uh, real soon.